if the banks say together and separately and clearly that they want to serve the best interests of their customers and the best interests of the country by just telling the government, no EWC, don't do it. It's going to be a disaster. That could make the difference between 204 votes and 195 votes. Is big business doing enough to push back against expropriation without compensation? I posed this question to Gabriel Krauser in a recent episode of my podcast, Solutions with David Ansara. What follows is a short extract from our longer conversation. You can watch the full episode where I interview Gabriel. That's linked in the description below. Enjoy. Let's look at the the campaigning that you're doing against the bill, Gabriel. Uh, You've sent uh, some letters of clarification asking uh, the financial institutions, for example, to to clarify what their position on this bill is. Uh, What's behind that move by you and what are you hoping to achieve there? So the big banks are all members of the Banking Association of South Africa. And the Banking Association of South Africa made credible and good representations to Parliament, sorry, on the expropriation bill, both written submissions and oral submissions. And the bank said, uh, you know, you've got to get rid of Section 12.3 of the expropriation bill. You've got to get rid of the nil compensation clause. Um, And then they said, look, and if you're not going to do that, you've got to be more specific, close the list, um, narrow it down. Uh, I thought in their written submissions, they could have been a little bit less uh, circumspect in that second move. Um, I think it's good to point out how all those factors, the fact that it's an open list is, is, is dangerous. The fact that speculation effectively becomes something that's unprotected. And uh, the fact that uh, losing control, you know, essentially this would legitimize taking something from someone else. Uh, those, it's very important to criticize those facts specifically, uh, but then also to say within that, the, the whole idea of no compensation doesn't work. Um, anyway, call that a, a niggly gripe. That's not the big deal. The big deal is this. The banks, generally speaking, made very good representation saying you can't do this EWC thing. It's going to blow up the financial market. It's going to be very bad for our customers. It's going to ruin the whole country's prospects of, of, of genuine economic development. They have, however, been silent on this issue subsequently. And in particular, since Ramaphosa reignited the whole debate, a couple of weeks ago at the ANC policy conference. So those representations were made, if I'm not mistaken, in early 2021. The written submissions, you know, this bill was tabled in 2020. And so the written submissions and the oral submissions, that was all dealt with like over a year ago. And it just is the case that things have changed. Uh, We're coming out of the pandemic. We're building into 2024. ANC has dropped below 50% at national municipal level. Ramaphosa is more embattled than ever before with the Palapala incident. And the ANC has had its policy conference in the build-up for the next five years. The party that's in government has now restated its position. And in particular, it's, it's dissolved this ambiguity. It said we're no longer going for a constitutional change. We're just going for EWC through the expropriation bill. And to my mind, in, in this new day, it behooves those financial institutions to also update their positions uh, to say, look, you know, we opposed this when it was this and the constitutional amendment, we opposed this uh, uh, a year ago. But today, in case you think anything's changed, we are also on the same page. The ANC hasn't changed. We also want to make it explicit that we haven't changed our views either. That's why I, we wrote to them, my, my colleague Mlondi uh, wrote to them, um, and he got some responses, um, but all of those responses were promises for further responses, um, and it's been weeks. Uh, we gave them two weeks to consider and respond, uh, and, and that period has long elapsed. Um, so we're renewing our efforts today uh, just to say, basically, we want South Africans to come together and oppose this explicitly. Um, we think that it is that, a, that an ounce of prevention is, is better than 10 tons of retrospective cure. Most South Africans are firmly against expropriation without compensation. Most South Africans, we know this because we polled them. 
Um, and uh, of course, you know, when you break down EFF supporters, we've asked, would you like expropriation without compensation for other people? And they, many of them say yes. And we say, would you like it for yourself? And they all say no. Um, so that's a technical subsection. But if you ask people in general, uh, would you prefer economic growth and, and more jobs or EWC as a past way to address past wrongs? 15% of white respondents say, never mind the jobs and the growth, we'll go for EWC. Um, I think it's a very interesting result. 15% uh, of black respondents say the same thing. So it's 15% of each. This is not a, actually a, a, a black versus white thing. There are an equally small minority of, 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 of those two races who really don't care about jobs and growth and are fixated on a kind of cosmic justice idea of, of, of punishing people and, and allowing the state this, this awesome and awful power. But 80% of black respondents, 85% of colored respondents, 90% of Indian respondents, and 80% of white respondents, in other words, a super majority of everyone, uh, the, the silent majority says, no, we want jobs and growth. The biggest issue in the country is unemployment. Uh, we're very happy to work together across racial lines. 80% say that jobs should be appointed on merit. All of this kind of stuff is very important. And it's important that the silent majority finds a voice, finds a form of expression and representation that actually can apply the kind of pressure that could change the course of history, that could change the course of events. If the banks say together and separately and clearly that they want to serve the best interests of their customers and the best interests of the country by just telling the government no EWC. Don't do it. It's going to be a disaster. That could make the difference between 204 votes and 195 votes. I'm not saying it's going to change the whole ANC, but it could change things on the margin. And that is what I'm campaigning for. I'm campaigning to change things on the margin to stop this bill from becoming a law. Because while I know it's unconstitutional, once it's become a law, that will immediately have deleterious market effects. Once it's implemented here and there, I know you've also done stuff on municipal bankruptcy. There are so many expropriating authorities that are going to be very eager to try and take advantage of it, even if Pretoria would prefer them not to. All of those instances are going to put individual businesses on the line. They're going to be driven out. They're going to be spending all of their money on court action. Some more skills are going to flee the country. Some more foreign direct investment will be held off and actually flee. Local direct investment will go away. That means more jobs being lost, that means a longer unemployment line. That means the dry tinder or the or the dry powder keg of South Africa that's ready to explode at any given moment is made drier still. That means more insurrection potentials. That means the worst possible way to build up into the 2024 election. Um, it's really important to, to not fall for the idea that we can uh, wait until after this bill has become a law to sort of tackle it in court and think that, th that, that that's going to make everything okay. Uh, it's not, it's not good enough. And one last thing, the land courts bill, if that gets passed, you know, in the office, we call that the EWC bill uh, or the EWC court bill, because effectively what that would do is, is, is put, put the courts uh, against owners uh, and in favor of uh, the state uh, doing ex expropriation without compensation. Uh, so even that, that level of court protection uh, would be further eroded. Thanks for watching. Please leave your thoughts down in the comments section below. If you'd like to watch the full episode with Gabriel Krauser, you can do so by clicking here. You can also subscribe to my other channel for other long form conversations. That's linked over here. My name is David Ansara. This is the CRA. Until next time, take care.